A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Atiyullah, Atiyah Rasul, Awlul Amri Minkum and always a reminder for myself and Abdul Ajeezu, Da'ifu, Miskeen, Zalim, Jahad <coughs> but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. Alhamdulillah that holy month of Shabban, Allah's immense blessings that granted us this place in the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad in the schools that are teaching the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and there's a gift from Allah of Divine love and ishq that Allah is a hidden treasure wanting to be known and He wants when He wants His servant to know Him He enrolls them in this schools of marifa of Gnosticism and realities and grants them access to the tarbiyah, the training, to the knowledges, to the way of realities to reach towards His Divine Love, His true Divine Love and to reach towards the schools of manners in which to achieve that Divine Love by what we talk about and if people absorb those realities they understand how far others are away from the reality. That the one whom feels that they are continuously drawing near to Allah without the love and the mannerisms and the character that's required, without the love and the reverence and respect for Sayyidina Muhammad that's required. You can see how much it's an illusion and delusion and that is the reality of Gnosticism to understand what kind of gift Allah has given to us and to appreciate that gift because 90% or 99% of even those of faith or in the world of Islam don't have that. Don't have that understanding, don't have that access to that understanding, then you understand that how great this gift is and how much Allah holds us to account that I've given you a tremendous gift and it's now your responsibility to appreciate it. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan, There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To use it and to be worthy of it. And that is towards the understanding of these knowledges. It's one thing just to hear something, another in which to put it into your heart and really contemplate and think that Allah has given me an immense opportunity. So I must be a student of the way because now I'm accountable. When they say you go for hajj and they call haramain and you enter into these holy precincts and holy areas means that if you sinned at home one sin, if you enter into the haramain and enter into the holy precincts of Sayyidina Muhammad that's one million sins because of the immense blessings and what Allah holds to account for the one whom enters into the holy sanctuaries. So then we begin to understand that the tariqah is always in that presence and the tariqah is teaching from that presence. Every association is from the presence of the holy precincts. It's coming live to the hearts of people 
from that like a report, like a news khabar, like a news report from the Rosa Sharif of Prophet that as soon as they speak, they speak from the vibration and intuition and inspirations of Sayyidina Muhammad from that chair and as a result that is emanating from the holy precincts. All whom are in it, all whom are around it, Allah describes, you are now a blessed, in a blessed vicinity. Whether we listen at home, whether we listen at the centers, wherever we are that emanation, those knowledges, the association, the dhikr, the salawats, all of that has to be under the understanding that it's coming from the holy precincts, the holy presence of Sayyidina Muhammad As a result we're accountable for it. That's why the teaching is, take your notes that understand what's being taught, implement that within your life. Not to hear it and it just passes and not even five seconds later doing something completely against what was just taught. That, that and all those whom are watching from these eyes and from the heavens that that becomes the against the adab of the tariqah. That's why then we're accountable. That Allah if you're going to teach them these realities then they have to know that they're accountable for those realities. And then the student of the way they write, they learn, they understand and they spend that time studying it. So that they learn it and live by it and tariqah is something in which you live by, that you breathe and eat and drink by it. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding of these realities and that to, to go deeper into these realities. So that when people are studying them and absorbing them, they become from that reality. And in this holy month and this opportunity that Allah gives to us by Monday night and Tuesday is that to write for us, to be students of the way to be the people of realities, to be people of light, that to be ashiqeen, that everything we're asking for from the oceans of iman is that Allah grant us from these lights and from these immense blessings and that grant us the ishq and the love and the muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad so that to fulfill our covenant with Allah inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha Shaykhati ya Rasulul Kareem Alameen InshaAllah InshaAllah Do we have anything for tonight? Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, please uh, forgive uh, my ignorance. How to properly use the nazma during tafakkur while doing zikr of who towards our hands? And is there any specific finger position used as in silat? Yeah. I think we have on the meditation book that to feel the heartbeat that the finger, the index finger and the thumb have a tremendous amount of energy and reality. That when you're feeling that energy and the identity is upon the thumb and the ocean of power and lights that are coming from the index finger is merely scanning the identity of insan. So they hold their thumb so that the concentration of their tafakkur is upon themselves and their heart. If they don't hold then their tafakkur can be and their meditation can be very scattered. So as they bring the meditation closer to ignite their energy. So the energy that they're going to be igniting is for their heart and for their being to be surrounded by that reality inshaAllah. And until they can make that connection and begin to bring more and more of that energy and more and more of that reality out inshaAllah. (coughs) 
Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam, Sayyidi, we tend to get very weird DMs on the Muhammadan pages we create, unlike anything seen before. How come the pages attract such weird energies? Yeah, because shaitan. That's what we, we described that anytime you try to spread the flag of truth and spread a light, the likelihood is you attract a lot of devils that they're angered by that light, they want to bring that flag down and they want to dirty the, the way of light. So that's why it requires a strong discipline and turn off the comments and post without comments and try your best to, to moderate everything. That's also responsibility is to moderate things, turn off the ability to comment and just propagate, propagate, propagate the teachings. Because the shaitans all come out and, and make every type of uh, attack and every type of nastiness and because that's what shaitan does. So that's the, the proof in itself of how if you cast a light into the darkness then that light burns the darkness and as long as that light is out and, and propagating it illuminates the darkness. So that's why they want the light to be extinguished and taken out so that they can operate within complete darkness. It's enough for people to propagate and throw a light into a dark space and that light illuminates by the virtue of its miraculous nature. As much as darkness that keeps coming in it can't take that light out. The darkness doesn't overtake the light. So they wish to extinguish it and blow it out or make it to move and to leave. So that's why the disciplines of tariqah is don't engage, don't talk with the, the people, don't click on anyone's link, just turn off the comments unless you can moderate correctly and, and take off uh, everything off so that uh, you don't have any types of uh, difficulties and, and uh, evilness and wickedness inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Alaikum Regarding yesterday's sohbah, is there any truth in the huruf of kursi as the, uh, as you were speaking about the rope? The what? Basically they're asking any truth in the huruf of kursi. Any truth in the huruf of kursi? I'm sure there is but we haven't talked about it. <laughs> there's a truth in everything. In the huruf of every word there's an immense reality. But for now to understand just what a kursi is, that what is a chair and what is a throne and that how it symbolizes the reality of the holy head. So let's not get too far ahead and try to understand what we already talked about, not to bring up things that we haven't even talked about because we're waiting to see from what we talked about what was understood. So when you want to bring up subjects that we didn't even talk about yet means that you understood all those and now you want to go more. For what? InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam uh, Amazing sohbat yesterday Sayyidi. Um, very well and comprehensive reality about shaitan, nafs and soul and how to counter shaitan and nafs. Shaykh, please advise us on, how, on the other two enemies, dunya and hawa, in continuation of this sohbah. How can we counter them and how our soul can play a role to fight these two enemies of the soul? May Allah it's good bless Zichan you. understood the talk last night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that 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 was the uh, the five enemies of the soul. That when we understand the the the, the enemies are the five or four nafs, shaitan, hawa, dunya, the four sections that the soul is cut into four parts. Those are the partitioning of the soul. Last night 
was for people to have a visualization because many people think they're doing good, they're pious, they're, they're, they're on the seat, they're in the position when in reality they're not and we're not. And that's what it, it gives us something very tangible. So when you go out and bother people, so go through the examples. So people should understand in their everyday life, when you bother people who's sitting on the chair? Because at every moment someone is sitting on that chair moving your hands, your lips, moving your eyes, everything that you're doing. So people think that, no I'm, I'm good, I'm righteous person, I pray, so my soul is doing these things. No it's very incorrect. You didn't reach that level of taslim in which Allah is rida, mardiya and, and I am pleased with your soul today and you're pleased with my Divinely Presence. These are very high stations in which the soul has so much power, the shaitan is under its feet and the nafs is burning under its feet and there's so much power coming out of that seat and the presence of the soul, it's a chair of flames in which shaitan doesn't dare approach that and the nafs is you know waiting for an accident. And that's why Prophet described that, don't leave me for a blink of an eye. That in a blink the nafs will think the fire is gone, I can sit. So that station is very difficult to achieve. So the talk last night should be everybody for the next few weeks just wondering and when they take their muhasaba Means again are they at night going back and say, who did I talk to at the center, who did I bother, who did I make comments about, who, what, what did I complain about? All of those you write them in your accounting. Who did you bother at work, who did you bother at home, who did you argue with? Everything that what you were doing for that day, now you have another column to write is that who was sitting on the chair because you heard the, the analogy so you know. You put on there the chair and then put, was it uh, S for shaitan or N for nafs and put S-O for soul <laughs> so you don't think it's shaitan, yeah. And then you can see every action that was done, if it was like really aggressive that was shaitan. When you start yelling and screaming uncontrollably, definitely shaitan. The soul has completely been enslaved that time and has nothing to do with things like that. Then you see shaitan, nafs, shaitan, nafs, shaitan, nafs and very few actions will actually show S-O or put S-O-S for the soul, <laughs> they've our soul, you know? When you feel like you prayed really good that day, you prayed on time, you can put S-O-S, the soul did that. If you're able to control yourself from being angry and belligerent and, and, and uh, mean to people and you control it then you put the soul. But the thing is it gives us a daily accounting and then if I look at the day and say, my goodness most of my day was these two guys and not my soul, they can now govern themselves accordingly and understand that. Yeah, I mean I'm not the, the, the greatest person that I thought I was and that I'm having a great difficulty with these. So those are what's important. Then no doubt your desire and dunya is playing a role into that because the, that the desire and dunya are both the friends of the nafs and shaitan. So when, when the dunya is, is too much in your desire, this shaitan and nafs are the ones pushing that element. The soul has nothing to do with dunya, wishes that you would just walk away from everything, go up on a mountain and just pray and suffer to get your food because the soul likes suffering because it doesn't like the nafs and shaitan. So that's, that's definitely nafs and how are all from shaitan and, and nafs and hawa and dunya means making for your, your physical pleasure that your desires to be achieved, your dunya to be achieved, those are all nafs and shaitan. 
And those are the, the two attributes they want to inflict upon people that you should eat the best. Who, who, who would say something like that? The other people are taking the good fruits, I need the good fruit. Why are they taking it before I get to it? Is that something the soul would say? No, the soul would never say like that, especially when they're all good fruit. Shaykh Nazim when people would leave he felt so ashamed that people were throwing things away. He would look through them and take them back out, that how are they throwing away this good food? So actually the soul would go through all of what people were throwing and would take it to make Allah happy. But shaitan takes what's good, throws it away and the nafs says that, how come this is like this, this is not the good quality. Why you gave him the good quality? Give me the good quality because the nafs wants to be the king, thinks it should be treated like the king. So then we know, so that's the importance of this teaching is that we take a teaching not that it just comes and goes but how are we going to make it a, a, a life event? This is what separates a shaykh from an imam. So when you're looking at 99% of YouTubes these are people whom are trained orators or imams. Their responsibility is to interpret a hadith, translate, not even interpret, translate a hadith, make it seem like it's beautiful from them, they didn't even give a tafsir of it, but the beauty of the hadith is from Prophet And they merely orate it out and tell somebody and go on their way. They don't care you listened, you didn't, you, you followed it, you didn't follow it because they're not a shaykh to be guiding, continuously guiding. The concept of a shaykh is to give you actual life coaching that take this hadith, take this teaching, sit down, make a list of your actions, what we call our daily accounting, our daily inventory. People asked about 12 steps, it's all based on tariqah 12 steps. Take your accounting, now put an attribute to it. That what you did the other day, was that from shaitan? Was that from the nafs? Or you really thought it was an SOS from your soul? Very few people have the category of soul. If they gave donation, that's from their soul. If they went out and fed people, that was from their soul. And everything else when they argue and yell and complain and all the different things that people do, then we see how much of my day is just nafs and shaitan, nafs and shaitan. So then I'm one of those whom have three guys fighting for one chair, thumma ammanu, thumma kafaru. One day I'm believing and one day I'm going into disbelief because when those guys sit on the chair, the two other guys. Then that chair become really heated, really bad things are happening. Yelling, screaming, angry, jealous, all these different characteristics. Then I have to realize when I understood that is now I should be increasing a fire so they can't sit on that chair. I have to do more salawats. I have to read then my dalal akhirat. I have to make my tafakkur with the shaykh so that I can connect with the energy because that's going to bring the fiercest energy possible. That brings an immense amount of energy so that that can begin to burn and create a fire upon that chair so that it makes a difficulty. So then that's how we, we come to the realization. As we see our situation then we understand we need more armament. And the heavenly weapon for the believer are their zikrs, their wudu, everything. They have to increase their fight against the devil and they have to do their zikr, they have to do their tafakkur, they have to keep their wudu, they have to keep all of their practices. So that's the importance of, of these teachings and these practices so that they're very much sort of real life, real a, B, C, D things to do, not a philosophy class and definitely not orators will just say something and go our way. Everyone is accountable for what they heard and now Allah looking to them 
to implement it, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam uh, I know we shouldn't judge but what if the nafs and shaitan of other people are affecting us? Yeah, that's the role of people's nafs and shaitans because Allah assigned the shaitan to everyone. So of course that's the game, everyone's nafs and shaitan is going to be affecting, especially in the home. Because that's the way Allah's designed it. It wasn't supposed to be easy where everyone's nafs and shaitan would help you to reach your goal. So it was supposed to be a fierce battle. So you're assuming that everyone in the battlefield is going to be actually in the battlefield. So that's the reality of life is that I have to take a path that is for myself and my grave and that my family or not anyone around me is going to have to change my character. I have to do my zikr, I have to do my tafakkur, I have to keep my sanity, I have to keep my connection and everyone else's energy is going to be attacking me. And if I have a lot of positive energy just my mere presence may aggravate people because their energies come upside down when that light comes into their presence. That's a given. So. Means then keep doing your practices and realize I shouldn't take myself to that place or I shouldn't take myself over there where people are very negative and their energy becomes very aggressive. So then you begin to seclude yourself more with that light because now you're accountable for that light. So if somebody build themselves, build themselves and every time then I go to the mall everybody starts to push me in the mall, start get angry at the mall, yeah then Allah's telling you, why are you doing in the mall? With that light that you have better you stay home or go to an empty mall. So that in itself is its own sign. If it's loved ones then you do your practices and keep your head down, do your, your zikrs and be patient, be patient. Until ufawdu amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bi ribad. That Allah sees the condition of His servant and Allah will change the condition, but He doesn't change the condition of a servant until they change what's within themselves. So when you go to work and, and everybody at work is angry with you, yeah, maybe Allah's angry with you because you bother everybody. So Allah sends a message within all His creation, bother Him. So there's a message in everything but rarely you meet somebody who's so good character and they go and everybody bothers them, no. Everything is a mirror. Somebody whom bothers everybody they go out and Allah makes everybody bother them so that they would pick up and, and realize, I shouldn't be doing that, I shouldn't bother people, I shouldn't make comments to people, I, I should try to make people happy everywhere I go. Do to others as you would like to have been done to you because Allah will make the whole world a, a reflection and a mirror for you. So that's in your muhasaba. that, no I didn't bother anybody, I didn't say anything to anybody. Then the more you keep this good character then why Allah would make everybody to say something to you? So there's many, many different levels and many different angles of a reality. But only the one who sits and contemplates and makes their connection. Allah has many ways to punish a servant, cuts their rizq when he's not happy with something of the character, special, tari special tariqah. If you're in tariqah and you, the shaykh is not reprimanding you, he doesn't yell at people but you find your rizq cut right away, paycheck is cut. They don't have to yell at anyone, they're, they're not here like, a, like crazy people. But if you think you're doing things and the shaykh is not saying anything to you, Allah will cut your rizq and that should be a sign for somebody, what did I do? Why did it slow down? Because you're doing wrong, it's not accepted. So do right, do good, be good. So you know people thinking, oh I, I got away with the shaykh's not saying anything, no, no, nobody got away with anything. Because of the school of good manners they're not going to get confrontational with people, they're not at all going to argue with anyone. 
they're giving teachings. If you don't listen to the teachings then the Supreme Boss Allah cuts the check and as soon as that's cut you got… Allah's got your attention, right? Because anyone who gets their check cut what happens? They come to the front of the line. But they keep saying, pray for me something to open, pray for me something to open. The real reply is that you should really pray that, what did you do that Allah got that cut? So you sit, med- meditate, contemplate and I have to change my character, I have to make sure Allah's happy with me, I have to do my daily awrad, I have to do my practices, I have to take Allah put this chair for me to sit in. And I can't be fiddling around, I don't play with my hat, I don't pay not attention. I sit there to learn the reality and as a result of learning that reality Allah holds me to account of that and then they're very mm, conscious of everything in their life. Anything moves in their life and their meditation they're trying to figure out what Allah wanted from them. And they become hyper alert. Not they're, they're heedless, you have to leave heedlessness and you become hyper alert in which like a sword over your head just dangling that this sword will cut your head if Allah's angry. Because Allah's giving you all these bounty, giving you all these realities, giving us all of these blessings. So rijal and the concept of, of maturity is that you rise up and begin to now sit in the chair talk to people good, act good, have good characteristic, anything moves in your life, you meditate, you contemplate, you make sure Ya Rabbi please if you cut something because I've done something wrong, tawbah, make your istighfar and ask for inspiration on what you could have done better. So then every aspect of their life they're watching very carefully, they're not heedless people. That's why we ask that when we talk ask questions because why? Not because we want to know what color you want to paint your house. No but to see are you understanding these talks? Because the talk wasn't for me but was to give an audience of four or five thousand people listening. One to feel they have a guide and a shaykh because nobody can follow anyone anymore and that to make it interactive for them to be able to email with help me at nurmuhammad.com and to, to basically have their associations and uh, to have their guidance and to feel the connection of the guidance, to feel that they're guided and that Prophet's love is with them. But everything is accountable. So when they hear the teachings and they ignore it then those are the first things that Allah will use. Those were from the three, rizq, death and the burying of treasure. If the rizq didn't wake you the next one's much scarier. So this is the way from Qur'an, this is not our saying, Allah So what did Sayyidina Khidr do with Sayyidina Musa I'm first one? The rizq, the ship was dropped right away. Why? Because they're they're distracted, that has to be brought down because then you have the attention. But as a person of the way then you begin to watch. When your boat looks like it's sinking Allah wants something, something's not been done right. Either it's a character, it's an awrad, it's something that's not being done right. Allah wants the attention, you feel like your boat is going down and you're paddling like you got water coming in. If it all together sinks definitely Allah wants something that, let's get your attention and, and get yourself in order, you're not taking the path seriously. And it's not a choice for people, they can't unenroll because nobody placed an ad in a paper to enroll you. Allah called you into this Divinely service. As a result you take your path seriously, you do your practices, you meditate and contemplate 
So that you're in a continuous connection with Divinely Presence and that's Divine Love that what does God want from me? So that's what builds love, that's what builds a connection, that's when you begin to feel a very deep closeness and you make a love and a, and a du'a to Prophet build the love with Sayyidina Muhammad and asking also Prophet Please, you take my case that grant me good character where if I've angered Allah provide for me an opening and Salawat al-Fatiha is that, that you're the one who can open what has been closed by my bad character, please open for me and that I'm at your feet and begging that you intercede for me. Then you know your place that my head on the feet of Prophet because I'm continuously asking the king, plead to Allah for where I'm coming short, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, how can a seeker of the way lose taste for dunya? How can a seeker? <laughs> it's like uh, if you have a favorite food, and you love kebab and one day Allah sends you to a restaurant and you get food poisoning from that kebab, you can't eat kebab again. <laughs> Takes one good bout of food poisoning to take that taste out of your mouth. And dunya can be like that for people, no matter how much Allah gives them of dunya, if they don't have the taste for it, they don't have the desire and the yearning to conquer the dunya and to conquer the world and to just keep you know making, 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 that has to go. And if not Allah will bring some sort of a similarity to the food poisoning in which the taste of it begins to go. That's through their salawats, their love and the way they approach the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad When they begin to understand if people have done the lentil diet that we explained that you live to eat most people, to wake up, oh what I'm going to have for lunch, what I'm going to have then for my dinner, my snacks and my whole day will be planned around living to eat. But when you eat to live is a different reality because by 10 days you're sick of lentils, normal people, you're sick of it but you're eating because you're going to die without food. So then you just eat the lentils and you have now all your focus on the work and zikr and ibadah that you have. So imagine if you're isolated in a room and that's happening because you're not picking all these delicious foods in, in your seclusion, you're just given a bowl of lentils. So you have all your zikrs to do, all your awrahs to do, all your practices to do, you have to quickly eat to have energy. So you begin to realize, I didn't really need this but I need it for an energy, now I have more energy for my worshipness. So then their, their system begins to change and the one whom busies themselves with their zikrs, their awrad, make sure that they're good with all their zikrs, all their awrads, everything done at night, then Allah provides for them in the world like a fly. Like a spider who built a beautiful web and a fly comes to them and sustains them because they did what Allah wanted from them, they put all their practices and their good character and Allah sustains them with things. But when the person doesn't know who they are and they say, no I'm going to go out hunting all day long to make the big, you know, the big catch and, and get a lot of money then they don't know who they are and they end up spending all their time wasting their time because Allah is not going to send the big catch. So that becomes the reality of people, they should lose that taste and they should have the taste of the Divinely Presence. Allah can give all of that once they have their system set. Their boat came back up, they understand that Allah is great, they do their zikrs, their practices, they have an immense love. And they understand at that time that what Allah sends to them, they take their portion and the rest they do what Allah wounds from them. But before that 
they wouldn't think like that. They would think, no this is actually all mine what came and this is just mine and I don't have any more time for the zikr and the zikr group, thank you very much I gotta go. So this is an important understanding in their path that the, that desire has to drop. At some point Allah can bring it all back or a small portion back but that's what has the greatest control upon people, inshaAllah. And there's no more time, the dunya is all crashing and crumbling everywhere. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, we have a gathering of mawlid every month at our neighbor's home for about 10-15 people. Uh, we recite Nat Sharif and Salawat and share our notes from your teachings, explain misconceptions and propagate the love of Rasulullah but from your last week's talk, we are cautioned if that is also putting a bullseye on us. We are nothing, Sayyidi, and whatever we share is you. Our intention is known to you better than we can express in words. But still, if this is something we can slip in a trap of our nafs and shaitan, please advise how we should continue. Well, Laykum As Salaam, just email help me, and each case is individual, but communicate that. Don't keep something like that hidden because that's where the danger is. Definitely that's why our group is uh, very successful is that we don't allow any zikrs anywhere. Because as soon as people want to meet there's a hidden agenda within their nafs and we have talks on that online that don't think your nafs told you what its plan is, right? The nafs plan is to destroy you from the shaykh. As soon as you said, I'm going to be with the shaykh, the nafs and shaitan have made a plan, we are going to cut your relationship with the shaykh. That's his plan and he has no other intention other than to cut that because that is his greatest threat. So the shaykh knows the plan, knows what the, sh the nafs is planning, is you don't know what the nafs is planning. You think, no, no shaykh, I have every good intention, you don't even know your intention. Oh wow, you didn't know any of your intentions. That's why when you communicate with the shaykh, he'll give you the ability on how to do that, keep your constant continuing sort of communication so that you're safe with that. That's why then like in a community you say, oh let's go meet at my house. No, why would to meet at somebody's house? Especially if we're in a center and we have a community with a center, why would you meet to somebody's house? That become like you know side groups where they have like little cliques of this nationality, that nationality. They're making like little governments within a government and that becomes again something very dangerous because it's natural inclination as soon as you get five people together one person then will talk. So now that person then begins to make themselves like a shaykh and give guidance. And now the nafs will enter in and before you know it they, they start to gather, they break away from the main group. So those are the dangers that the, everyone faces. That's why if they communicate with the shaykh that on an email and say, shaykh this is what we're doing and the shaykh is aware of that then he guides you on how to do that to safeguard and that everyone should continuously meet with the shaykh. That don't, don't keep yourselves isolated and separate, those people whom you deal with they should also be communicating with the shaykh so that they know their shaykh is the shaykh not the people at that group because then they'll have the impress impression that that's their shaykh and they never met the real shaykh. That's the danger inshaAllah. But as long as you're in communication with the shaykh and he gives you the ijazah, gives you the permission on how to interact with groups that are far away, how to watch the live broadcast, how to listen to the talks, how to order the books of the shaykh and you make sure that the book is disseminated to people, how to have the taweezes and give the taweezes to people. All of those are done with the understanding of the shaykh. Yeah, so there is a system, just have to communicate it, not to let ourselves fall in the trap of just doing things without anyone communicating inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Is there a point where the soul never leaves the kursi? Nafs al-mutma'inna 
means the, the one who reaches Allah's rida and satisfaction. It's not a position of, uh, of complete because then those become very high level awliya. But they have a strong, strong connection to their authority. At times their nafs may enter in, at times shaitan may try to fool them. So there's no guarantee if they give in to their shaitan, the shaitan can throw them off. And there are shaykhs that have fallen, there are awliya who have fallen, that's no doubt. So there is no guarantee, Sayyidina Adam fell, he's a Prophet of Allah Alam isma kullaha and was taught all the knowledges. So this is Allah's, Allah's example is from prophecy they, they ran into trouble because in one moment he listened to shaitan and down but Allah's forgiving and waited for 40 years of repentance to forgive Sayyidina Adam Then 11 brothers came against one brother who's a Prophet of Allah so their nafs entered in, didn't see his prophecy and his station and attacked him. So what was the question? Can you permanently sit on the chair? No. That is only for Sayyidina Muhammad whom conquered everything because Allah wrote it that way. And as a result he is the Sultan for all of creation and any creation coming into existence. What we strive is, is not for perfection because you have to be realistic with yourself but take a path towards perfection in which I understand the rules, I understand the reality and I try my best to be seated at that reality. But to know that that's, that's a very difficult state especially in continuously surrounded by dunya. So it means that you're continuously under your nafs, continuously under satanic attack and it come harder and harder and harder. And then Allah has many different rahmas and mercies in which He resets them. So these whom they reach to the position to sit upon their chair, they become mahfuz. Not like the Prophet's mahsum but they're mahfuz, they're guarded in which Allah put them and guards them. And anytime they do something wrong Allah will cleanse them and however Allah wants to clean them. So these are, these are difficult positions but for us we strive for the way of perfection to understand the reality and to put the shaitan and the nafs down as much as possible. But definitely not to live a life in which the shaitan and nafs are only sitting on the chair and the soul never got there. And not also to surrender that chair, so shaykh, this is my character I'm not able to do this or that, that's something they want to hear because that means that you're giving your chair up and you're, you're going away. InshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ili Sharifa Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa sahbihi kiram wa ala mashaykhina fi tariqat nashbandiyat al aliyya khasatan ruhi imam tariqa qaw taqali ka shan nashband Muhammad wa Isa al Bukhari Tarawliya Shaykh Abdul Faiz Dagestani Sayyidina Shaykh Muhammad Nawazul Maud al Hakkani Mawlana Shaykh al Shaykh Muhammad Nawazul Maud al Hakkani Shaykh Muhammad Adil Muhammad Khalik al Khushit al Wani Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al Mahdi alayhi salam Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam Sayyidina Sayyidina alayhi salam Thumma Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al Hassan salam, Imam al Husayn salam, Sayyidatina Fatima alayhi salam, Sayyidu Sadatina, Siddiqina al Fatiha. Ameen. InshaAllah bin niyata khatmi khawjikan. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life 
our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.